Hello, this is a problem in multiple regression of a more complicated kind that we've met so far. Uh, I've created a little narrative here to try to justify um, what's going on. Also, another lesson to take away from this is that statistical analyses are never done in a vacuum. They're always done with some kind of hypothetical experimental background. Um, of a hypothesis testing nature, and this needs to be taken into consideration. So I've written a not entirely serious, but I hope at least partly credible backstory to this analysis. So we have a situation whereby a psychologist is testing a hypothesis that extroversion is correlated with a degree of arousal in a situation like a party, which is not totally implausible. She's also um, maintaining that this degree of arousal might be um, indicated by redness of face, measured on some color scale. So in other words, we're trying to get some sort of objective uh, measure of extroversion in a social situation. And the first simple version of this theory of hers is that uh, redness of face and extroversion will correlate. So she goes to a lot of Christmas parties and measures the redness of face of volunteers and later measures those same people's extroversion. Um, the first question in this worksheet is uh, whether um, the hypothesis is confirmed whether indeed redness of face can be used to predict extroversion. Uh, and to do that I'm going to go in and simply do the regression. Y is the dependent variable and X is the independent. And I see a rather weak result. Um, the regression is nearly significant. It's a strong trend, but it's not actually significant. Adjusted R squared is rather low. Note, it's about 9%. Um, not a very encouraging result. Okay, so. I suppose the answer is that the outcome provides rather weak evidence for the researcher's belief. However, fortunately, as I've said, another variable was measured, namely the alcohol consumption of participants, represented by variable Z. Now, you would expect that alcohol consumption would almost certainly correlate with redness of face. It may or may not correlate with extroversion, however. Now, if the researcher runs a regression of y on z, let's just see whether indeed it does correlate with extroversion. Uh, going back into the box, we can put z now instead of instead of x, and we find absolutely no no evidence whatsoever for any linkage between uh, extroversion and alcohol consumption. Okay. Incidentally, if we wished at this point to uh, check the hypothesis that um, redness of face and alcohol consumption are correlated, which I know what I will do. Yeah, well, <laughs> we have a very strong correlation here. These data, by the way, are not, uh, I hope I don't need to make the point that these are entirely spurious uh, data made up by myself to illustrate the point. They were not actually the subject of any research, funded or otherwise. Okay, so let's go back into the question. Well, the answer to question two is alcohol consumption utterly fails to predict extroversion. Now, question three raises the question of what happens if we put all, both of the predictors in. Now, remember that... Um, X was a rather weak predictor of Y. Z had absolutely no value at all in predicting Y. When X is used to predict Y, there's about a 9% um, variance in Y accounted for by X. And Z has absolutely no variance at all in common with, with Y. So what happens now when we put them both in is, if you're not 
familiar with this phenomenon. Pretty astonishing. We've just adjusted our square goes up to something like 85 or 86%. And both IVs are extremely, that is not a word one should technically use, but they're both extremely significant. The T scores here are very, very large. So, what is going on? Um, this is obviously not moderation, um, because moderation requires the product of two IVs having been centralized. Uh, there's no, we haven't done any uh, preparation of a moderator variable here. It's not mediation, because mediation requires one of the two variables to drop out when you put them in, when you put both of them in as IVs. So it must be suppression. And given that um, X is the primary predictor variable, Z is, is clearly a suppressor variable. Uh, remember that Z did not correlate at all with um, Y with the DV. Uh, in other words, alcohol consumption did not correlate with extraversion. So it's not a case of cooperative suppression. We have an instance of classical suppression. Um, before talking about that any more, I'll just go on to question five. What practical advice would you give to the researcher? Um, would be, well, it would obviously be, if you want to use this method, you must continue to measure, in all cases, to measure the value of the, the suppressor variable Z, because Z is uh, accounting for, um, because Z enables you to make a very much better prediction of uh, Y uh, than X would be on its own. Um, okay, so what is happening here? Why is, why do we have this extraordinary result that, um, why do we have Z with a very highly um, negative uh, effect on 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 Y? Um, the reason for this is that, as I've indicated before in the when we did that correlation, X and Z are highly correlated together. Um, redness of face and alcohol consumption, it's plausible that the more you drink, the redder you get in the face. So what this is doing, what Z is doing here is typically, as in, as in classical suppression, Z is accounting for a proportion of the noise, a proportion of the variability in X, which has nothing to do with extraversion. So um, measuring Z enables you to remove this noise element from the regression and leaves the uh, the remaining variability in redness of face, which is indeed accounted for by uh, the link to extraversion. And that's how uh, classical suppression works in practice, although in practice you will probably seldom or never have a data set which illustrates it to this degree of perfection.